welcome back so in this session we will see a special system which is called as LTI system so it is a special case of system which we will discuss and it is a very important for the gate point of view okay so let's see <coughs> LTI system. So LTI system means it has to satisfy both linearity as well as time invariant. So it has to satisfy both linear and time invariant. And time invariant. Suppose if I take an LTI system, let's see what is the input output relations it can give. LTI system well, try to understand suppose if x of t is the input let's assume the output is y of t let's assume the output is y of t suppose if i take k1 x of t then what is the output for this is nothing but k1 y of t k1 y of t okay next if i take k2 x sorry if i take x of t minus t naught then because it is a time invariant system we have to get the output is also delayed by the same time so that is nothing but y of t minus t naught Suppose if I take k2 x of t minus t naught as the input, then for this the corresponding output is k2 y of t minus t naught because homogeneity. Next, suppose if I take k1 x of t plus k2 y of sorry k2 x of t minus t naught as the input then what is the corresponding output we can get which is nothing but k1 y of t plus k2 y of t minus t naught so remember for an LTA system if this kind of input is given then we are going to get this kind of output so that's what the LTA system so in whole I can give For LTA system, if x of t is the input, y of t is the output, k1 x of t plus k2 x of t minus t naught is the input, then the output is k1 y of t plus k2 y of t minus t naught. Okay, take it. So this is about the linear system. So linear system is going to give you the output in this form if it is the input is in this form. Okay, take it. Let's see a question from workbook. I hope it is completed. Okay. Let's see. The question is the input output waveforms of LTA system are as shown in figure. The input output waveforms of an LTA system are as shown in figure. Okay. They have given input and output in this way. So this is what x of t it is given as input for an LTA system
then the output what it is given is zero one one y of t. Okay. So they have given input waveform and output waveform for an LTA system. But what if the input is if the input is in this way okay then what is the output we are going to get so what is the output if the input is like this okay so try to understand so many people will do mistake here like uh, they will assume that for this this is nothing but the differentiation that means if you differentiate x of t you are going to get y of t that's not correct why because if you differentiate this curve you have to get the impulse at one but you, are you getting the impulse function at one because there is a sudden jump from one to zero there must be an impulse function which is not there so definitely that is not the relation between them next so we don't care what is the relation between x of t and y of t but because of it is a lta system by using lta system properties we can get the output very easily how so first try to understand what is the input they have given what is the relation with this with the x of t so you have to understand what is the relation for this with this one okay so let's see can i say input if you observe carefully input whatever the part here 0 to 1 which is 1 exactly x of t and next if you shift if you shift this x of t by one unit means if you delay the x of t by one unit it will comes like this so it will comes like this once it comes like this if you multiply with minus 3 you are going to get this one so in simple i can write the given input in terms of x of t is nothing but x of t minus 3 x of t minus 1 3 x of t minus 1 so this is what the input we know for x of t if it is y of t if the input is in this form for LTA system what is the kind of output we are going to get output must be y of t minus 3 y of t minus 1 so same thing y of t we have to write exactly the same way and we have to shift it by one unit and multiply with minus 3 so we are going to get output in the form like this zero one one from one to two it is going to be minus 3 so this is what the output what we are going to get okay take it I hope you have completed this. Next, give a heading impulse response. Give a heading impulse response of a system. Okay. impulse response okay. try to understand what do you mean by the impulse response response that means output impulse response means it is the output when the input is a impulse function so whatever the input that is nothing but 
impulse function suppose if the input is a impulse function then the output which is nothing but called as impulse response that is as simple as that that means suppose let's say if it is given like this a system let's say continuous time case if i take if x of t is the input let's say y of t is the output let's say y of t is the output now if i give x of t is equal to delta t that means in particular if i give the input is nothing but impulse function then the corresponding output y of t is impulse response and it is represented with a h of t and it is represented with h of t in the similar manner if i take a discrete time system let's assume x of n as the input y of n as the output if i have taken x of n is equal to delta n then the output y of n which is called as h of n so remember h of t in the continuous time case or h of n in the discrete time case are called as impulse response impulse response impulse response that's what the impulse response okay and one more thing remember in lta systems the lta systems are represented by using the impulse response so in general lti systems are represented by impulse response represented by impulse response how like let's say this is what the representation of lta systems like by using the h of t suppose if it is a discrete time case they will show it like a h of n okay take it okay. let's take the question from the workbook Question number 22. In the previous question, which is nothing but question number 21, I haven't given the number. Please take that. There is a question number 21. So let's see the question number 22. The unit impulse response of a discrete time LTA system is the unit impulse response of a discrete time LTA system is. that means they have given h of n is equal to 1 comma 2 arrow is here then obtain its output if the input is then obtain its output when the input is 4 comma 5 so they have given h of n and x of n they want to find out what is the output of the system first try to understand the given system is a discrete time lta system discrete time lta so if x of n is the input y of n is the output now what if delta n is the input if delta n is the input for any discrete time lta system this is going to be h of n is the output h of n is the output 
but in this case they have given x of n which is 4 comma 5 4 comma 5 then what is the output for this then what is the output for this that is what we have to find out okay first try to understand x of n which is nothing but 4 comma 5 that means at n is equal to 0 its value is equal to 4 and n is equal to 1 its value is equal to 5 that's what x of n now what I am doing is can I represent x of n in terms of impulse function yes at 0 we are having an impulse function with strength is equal to 4 and at 1 we are having an impulse function delta n minus 1 with the strength is equal to 5 so we can represent this x of n like 4 delta n plus 5 delta n minus 1 we can represent it like this now try to understand for delta n the output is h of n if it is a LTI system 4 delta n plus 5 delta n minus 1 for this can you tell me what is the output if it is a LTI system we know just now we have seen that x of n having y of n then k1 x of n plus k2 x of n minus 1 sorry n uh, k2 x of n minus n naught is having the same kind of output but just we have to replace x with a y so here also if I have written the input in the form of 4 delta n plus 5 delta n minus 1 what is the output for this which is in terms of h of n that is 4 h of n plus 5 h of n minus 1 so we have to find out 4 h of n and 5 h of n minus 1 and we have to add them okay so let's see 4 h of n how it look like 4 h of n h of n has to be multiplied with 4 that is nothing but 4 comma 8 next 5 h of n minus 1 5 h of n minus 1 that means what is h of n minus 1 if I shift this arrow left side by 1 8, that is 0 1 2 0 1 2 has to be multiplied with 5 that is nothing but 0 5 So by adding them, I can get the output. By adding them, I can get the output, which is nothing but 4, 13, 10. So this is what the output for the system. Okay, take it. Okay, I hope it's over. Next, in LTA system, one very important topic we have to discuss is nothing but the convolution. So, let's try to understand the convolution. Convolution. So, what do you mean by convolution? It is something like a mathematical operator, like a multiplication, addition, subtraction, like that. It is a mathematical operator. Why we have to use the convolution where the application comes? That means if I say given input for LTA system, especially for LTA system, they have given input and they said this is the uh, H of T. That means impulse response is given. So they have defined the system and they have given the input. We have to find out the output. So there the convolution comes into picture. What the convolution is, what is the operation we have to done with x of t and h of t so that we can get the output is nothing but the convolution that means convolution of x of t input and impulse response is nothing but the output that's as simple as that so convolution is applicable 
for entire system so is a mathematical operator mathematical operator used to find the output of an lti system remember it is all about lti system of an lti system when input and impulse response are given impulse response are given that means suppose for lti system if they said h of t this is x of t then what is the output y of t which is nothing but x of t convolution with a h of t the convolution symbol is this one convolution with a h of t that's what it is suppose if it is a discrete time system h of n if x of n is given as the input then how we can calculate y of n which is nothing but x of n convolution with h of n x of n convolution with h of n so remember so to find out the output what is the operation we have to perform between input and impulse response is nothing but the convolution okay try to take it now let's see what is the formula to find out the convolution so what is the formula for convolution first i will go with the discrete time case and we are having the analogy between discrete time case and continuous time case from that we can see the formula for continuous time case also let's see the discrete time convolution so first discrete time convolution before try to understand the convolution suppose a signal x of n which is input let's say at minus 1 0 1 let's see. so this is x of n which is given so i don't know the exactly the values at minus 1 0 1 2 so can i call them at minus 1 we are having x of n which is nothing but x of minus 1 at 0 we are having the value which is x of 0 at 1 we are having the value x of 1 at 2 we are having the value x of 2 this is what the input x of n in the form of x of minus 1 x of 0 like that now try to understand what i am doing can i write x of n like uh, at minus 1 we are having an impulse function with strength is equal to x of minus 1 so i can represent it with uh, x of minus 1 delta n plus 1 can i represent it like this this line having a strength x of minus 1 at minus 1 so we know delta of n plus 1 is existing at minus 1 whose value is equal to x of minus 1 plus at 0 it is represented with uh, x of 0 delta n plus at 1 it is represented with x of 1 delta n minus 1 plus x of 2 delta n minus 
delta n minus 2. So this is the way we can represent x of n in general, in general. Can I represent x of n, any signal x of n? Summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k delta n minus k. Can I represent it like this? How sir? See, try to understand. Suppose k value is changing from minus infinity to plus infinity, but in this case it is having only minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So let's say k value is equal to minus 1. What we can write? x of minus 1 delta n plus 1. Yes. If k is equal to 0, x of 0 delta n. If k is equal to 1, x of 1 delta n minus 1. If k is equal to 2, x of 2 delta n minus 2. This is the way we can represent. So in general, any signal can be represented in this form. There is nothing but x of k delta n minus k. Now, try to understand. <coughs> if it is the input for LTA system, what is the output for it? Okay. So let's see. LTA system. If delta n is the input, then what is the corresponding output, which is nothing but h of n. Because impulse is the input, we are going to get impulse response as the output, which is nothing but h of n. Suppose if I take delta n minus k as the input, then we are going to get h of n minus k because it is a LTA system, time invariant property we can use. Next, x of k delta n minus k then i can get x of k is a constant so if any constant is multiplied from the homogeneity property output is also multiplied with the same constant x of k h of n minus k next from the linearity property if i take these kind of inputs and sum them then output is going to be get sum x of k delta n minus k then Output is also the same, which is nothing but summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k h of n minus k. So if you try to understand what we have written here is nothing but the x of n. This is nothing but x of n. What we are going to get for an input is nothing but the output y of n. Output y of n. So, I can say simply this is nothing but the convolution formula when if it is a discrete time system. Okay, first take down this, then we will write some more points. Okay. So for a discrete time system, if the system is defined with h of n, h of n, we are talking about LTA systems only. Now, if x of n is the input, we are going to get y of n, that is nothing but x of n convolution with h of n. What is the mathematical formula for this, which is nothing but summation dummy variable changing from minus infinity to plus infinity x of k, that means x of dummy variable, h of n minus dummy variable, that is h of n minus k. So this is the formula for the convolution in the discrete time case. Now, what if I take continuous time case? In the continuous time case, let's see. Suppose if the impulse response is h of t, if input is x of t, output is y of t, what is the relation which is nothing but x of t convolution with h of t, convolution with h of t. Now try to understand. So we have to see the similarity between discrete time case and continuous time case. In the discrete time case, if it is a summation in the continuous time case, it is going to be integration minus infinity to infinity 
x of dummy variable that is nothing but x of tau h of t minus tau d tau so this is what the convolution integral this is what the convolution summation okay take it i haven't done any proof here so try to understand because it is a simply a analogy we have taken from that analogy i have written this formula okay Now, let's see the properties of convolution. Give a heading. Properties of convolution. Properties of convolution. In that, the first property is a commutative property. So, we are not seeing any proofs here. So that is going to take a lot of time but after that still we have to remember what is the result so directly i am giving you the properties commutative property so we know the commutative property what do you mean by that suppose if you shuffle them still it is going to be give you the same result that means let's say y of t is equal to x of t convolution with h of t that means h of t convolution with x of t that's what the commutative property means that means if you interchange the system and the signal it won't make any difference because this is simply a mathematical formula so it cannot it cannot identify which one is a signal which one is a system even though if you take two signals still it is going to give you the result because it is simply a mathematical operator so remember so x of t convolution with h of t is also equal to h of t convolution with x of t that means we can change the formulas also we know this x of t convolution with h of t which is integral minus infinity to infinity x of tau h of t minus tau d tau this is also equal to h of t convolution with x of t then we can write integral minus infinity to infinity x of t minus tau h of tau d tau d tau so this is the formula in the similar manner for a discrete time case also y of n is equal to x of n convolution with h of n so this is also equal to h of n convolution with x of n h of n convolution with x of n so here x of n convolution with h of n this is having the formula summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k h of n minus k h of n minus k but if you shuffle them this is going to give you summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n minus k h of k h of k so this is what is called as commutative property next property what we have to see is associative property associative property what the associative property is saying that suppose if you take x of t convolution with h1 of t convolution with h2 of t so we are having two convolutions that means we have to perform the convolution two times so we don't have the formula for two times convolution that means for three signals we cannot do the perform the convolution that means first we have to perform the convolution between two signals then we have to convolute with the other signal that's what we have to do so what the associative property is saying that you can convolute any two signals first and convolute with the remaining signal that's what it is saying that that means suppose if you convolute first x of t h1 of t then this whole convolution with h2 of t or first if you do convolution with h1 of t and h2 of t then this whole convoluted with x of t that is also can be done 
or sometimes you can convolute with x of t and h2 of t these two last two then you can convolute with h1 of t because commutative property is saying that we can exchange them so that is also can be done so you can do convolution for any two signals first then you can convolute with other signals that's what the meaning of associative property so this is equal to x of t convolution with h1 of t whole convolution with h2 of t is equal to x of t convolution with h1 of t convolution with h2 of t that is what it is okay. so what is the application of associative properties we can find what is the overall impulse response when the systems are cascaded so let's see cascaded systems cascaded systems that means suppose if i take a first system which is h1 of t next system h2 of t now for this system if input is x of t you tell me what is the output of first block which is nothing but x of t convolution with h1 of t this is the output of the first block then this is the signal for second system that means this is the input for the second system then what is the output for this is nothing but x of t convolution with h1 of t whole convolution with h2 of t from the associative property i can rewrite this as x of t convolution with h1 of t convolution with h2 of t that means what i am doing is if input is given x of t then we are getting the output is x of t convolution with something i hope you understood what i am trying to say so if x of t is the input directly i am seeing the final output which is nothing but x of t is convoluting with something so i told you output is nothing but x of t convolution with impulse response that means i can say this total thing h1 of t convolution with h2 of t is going to be the overall impulse response when the two systems are cascaded that means i can replace these two systems with a single system with a single system whose impulse response overall impulse response is nothing but h1 of t convolution with a h2 of t h2 of t so if x of t is the input the output is x of t convolution with h of t so remember from here onwards when two systems are cascaded then what is the overall impulse response is nothing but the convolution of the two impulse responses clear take it okay next property which is distributive property distributive property what are the distributive properties saying that suppose if x of t convolution with h1 of t plus h2 of t then we can distribute it inside this bracket inside this bracket what do you mean by that x of t convolution with h1 of t plus x of t convolution with h2 of t so this is what the output we are going to get that means if h1 of t plus h2 of t whole convoluted with x of t we can represent it like this this is is going to help you in finding out overall impulse response when the systems are parallel parallel systems 
parallel connection. How? Let's see. H1 of T. H2 of T. For both of them, we are having the same input. And if they sum, if they get sum. This is called as parallel connection. Okay. Now you see, if input is x of t here, the same input goes to h1 of t so that I can get the output here is x of t convolution with the h1 of t. The same input goes here so that I can get x of t convolution with the h2 of t, h2 of t. Then because it is a summing the signals, we are going to get x of t convolution with a h1 of t plus x of t convolution with a h2 of t. From the associative property, this is equal to x of t convolution with a h1 of t plus h2 of t. H2 of t. That means if the input is x of t, we are going to get output is x of t convolution with something that something is nothing but the overall impulse response that means i can replace these two systems with a single system which is having impulse response is sum of the two impulse responses which is h of t is equal to h1 of t plus h2 of t that's what we are going to get so if input is x of t the output is x of t convolution with h of t. Okay, take it.